Raise your hand if you believe that God should do something new in our country. Raise your hand if you believe that God should do something new in your own life. When I hear the phrase, God is doing something new, I want you to say, thanks be to God. God is doing something new. In our gospel passage today, God is doing something new. In our gospel passage today, very clearly, Jesus is beginning a new path and a new way. In our gospel passage, and if you read throughout the gospel of Matthew, Jesus clearly is sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's who he's sent to. Today's gospel passage shocks people. We have to read every gospel passage in its context. If you turn to Matthew chapter 10, we're, the, the gospel passage from today is Matthew chapter 15. If you turn to Matthew chapter 10, Jesus sends out the 12 apostles. And this is what it says. Jesus sent out the 12 instructing them this. Do not go into a pagan territory or a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So in today's gospel, who is it that approaches Mary? I mean, who is it that approaches Jesus? It's a Canaanite woman. A Canaanite woman is a pagan, and she's, in fact, she's an enemy of Israel. So what does Jesus say? Send her away. I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But Jesus does something new. Thanks be to God. What does he do? He opens the gospel of salvation today, not just to the Jews, but to the Gentiles. So much so that the last verses of Matthew's gospel, because of what happens today, because of something new that Jesus did, does, says this in Matthew 28, verse 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Of what nations? All nations. Jesus does something clearly new in today's gospel passage, and it sets off, in a very beautiful sense, a new pattern that Christ, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus, came not just for the Jews, but he came for all. If we look at our world today, every single one of us can boldly agree that we need God to do something new. But we also need God to do something new in our own lives, in our homes, in our families. And he, we need God to do something new in our church. I have this little thing that I've been doing recently. I've been calling it a reality check. If we look at a lot of the data about the church right now, sometimes be a little depressing. This is not to negate the fact that the Catholic Church clothes more people, feeds more people, educates more people than any other institution in the world. That's all true. But let's also look at this reality check. A year ago, a study was done and the results came out that 70% of Roman Catholics don't believe in the true presence of the Eucharist. Data shows that for every one Roman Catholic that joins the church, so someone who's not Catholic becomes Catholic, six baptized Roman Catholics leave the church. Data shows that for those who go to the RSA process, after five years in the church. Among practicing Catholics, a practicing Catholic, by the way, is defined as someone who goes to Mass two times a month, 30, 36% of practicing Catholics proclaim to be pro-choice. 74% of Catholics have no objection to cohabitation prior to marriage. 57% of Catholics are in favor of same-sex unions. And let's look at the voting record of the Roman Catholic the United States of America for the past three elections. Obama versus McCain. 54% of Catholics voted for Obama. 
Obama versus Romney. 50% of Catholics voted for Obama and 48% for, 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 for Romney. Clinton and Trump, 48% of Catholics voted for Clinton, 45% for Trump. In every single case, Catholics in America voted the pro-choice candidate. These are all facts that you check. None of these are lies. And you put them all on the table and things look really, really bad. But if we look at all of this, and if this is true data, which it is, it completely and totally explains Biden. Joe Biden, who is running for president of the United States of America, who professes that he is a Roman Catholic, is officiates at gay same-sex union marriages, said that he himself will take down the sisters of the poor. There's an article of birth control and contraception. Now, if you look at all of this, although we can say we feed more people, we clothe more people, we educate more people, clearly, my brothers and sisters, something is really, really broke. People keep talking about how I can't wait to get back to normal. And as you've heard me say in homily after homily, I hope we never get back to normal. Because normal is this. Normal is 70% of Catholics not believing in the true presence of the Eucharist. Normal is that 36% of Catholics are pro-choice. Normal is toxic. Where's open all of this? The hope is that, my dear brothers and sisters, God is going to do something new. And you say, Father, I mean, how? Well, let's look at our second reading today. St. Paul's letter to the Romans says this. Just as you once disobeyed God, you have now received mercy. Because, sorry. Just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy. Because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. God delivered all into disobedience that he may have mercy upon all. You see, if we look at the reality of where things are at in our world and the reality where things are at even in the church, we can make a decision. Either A, we make a decision really bad and it's never going to get better. Or we listen to St. Paul that God delivered all to disobedience that he may have mercy upon all. That our God is a merciful God. That our God is a possibility. That our God is a God of chance. That our God is a God who even in the midst of disobedience can draw people to his mercy. Do I believe Our nation, our church? Yeah, I do. We have to believe that. We have to believe that those who are blatantly obedient to God's laws, to God's commands, and those who are in our church, that God can draw them to his mercy. The question is, how will it happen? It'll happen, my brothers and sisters, by us looking at our first reading today from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Observe what is right and what is just, for my salvation is about to come. My justice is about to be revealed. Observe what is just and do what is right. My brothers and sisters, on our part, we are called all the more to cling to what is true. What do we know is true? We know that the is the body and blood of Jesus. We know that life begins at the very moment of conception. We know that Jesus Christ founded a church upon the rock of Peter. We know that marriage is beautiful and that family life is a gift. We know these things. And because we know what is right and just, we have to live it in a profound and beautiful way. And I would say that we have to live it in a new way. That we have to make a decision to say that God is going to do something new in my life. And that through that, the ripple effect will take place 
that God is able to work in the life of every single one of us. I need every single one of you to begin your day with a simple prayer. Lord, do something new in my life today. I need you to wake up every single day and say, Lord, do something new in our world today. Do something new in our church today. Do something new in my family. Lord, do something new in my marriage today. Lord, do something new in my school, in my workplace, in my university. Lord, do something new in the way that I love my children. And then we need to act. We need to act boldly. For those of you who are married, I want to encourage you and challenge you to live your marriage in a way you've never lived it before. One of the reasons why people believe what they believe about marriage is because they don't see marriage being lived out as, as it should. We have to then all the more live the joy of marriage. I challenge every couple in my parish this week. If you guys don't go on dates, you need to go on dates. You need to re-enkindle romance and joy and passion. Those of you who live in a family, how do you live your family life? And we need to allow God to lead us in new ways to find joy in family life. For those of you who have children, when your children bring over their siblings, or sorry, when your children bring over their friends to your home, do those say, gosh, I really love coming to this house. It's different than other houses I go to. The way they love each other, the way they have joy, the community, the faith, the life, the devotion. We have to allow God God wants to deliver the disobedient and to show mercy to them. And he will do it through his grace, through his mercy. And he will do it through people just like you who say, Lord, do something new in my life. God did something new 2,000 years ago. And God can do something new again today. We have to believe that. We have to put our faith in that, our trust in that. Our church depends on it. And thus our church depends on you, on our faith. We allow God to work in us. May we allow God to work through us. And through God's grace, may he do something new. Thanks be to God.